I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Storage Switzerland is an analyst firm focused on the storage, virtualization, and cloud marketplaces. This is an ongoing series of Chalk Talk videos that we're doing on various subjects throughout the industry. Today, what we're going to feature is storage efficiency. What's the best way to get the most out of the storage you own? In the first part of this uh, section, we're going to talk about primary storage. And by that, I mean the storage that you use on a day-to-day -day basis that stores your most active data. Uh, this is typically hard disk-based uh, storage systems. Uh, it's also one of the fastest growing parts of your environment. And we're looking for ways to store more information on that storage. So let's jump in. The first thing we want to do is look at the different options that are available to, to us in the storage efficiency equation. So most companies today will offer a feature called thin provisioning. Some will offer cloning based on snapshots. And then we're seeing more and more companies start to really focus on providing space optimization. So let's look at how each one of these technologies work and which one might be the best for your environment. So first, let's talk about thin provisioning. Thin provisioning basically dynamically allocates storage space as it needs. So for example, let's say we have a storage system that has 10 terabytes of disk capacity. And we have an application that needs one terabyte. Well, as any storage manager will tell you, what really happens when a user is requesting one terabyte of storage, what they're really saying is maybe within three years, that's what I'm going to need. Day one, they don't need a terabyte of storage. They probably need, at best, double-digit gigabytes, maybe 100 or 200 gigabytes. So what we want to be able to do is instead of having to assign a whole terabyte of storage and wait three years for the application to actually come close to start using it, what we really want to have happen is to have that storage be allocated as the user needs it. And that process is called thin provisioning. So what happens is we assign uh, to the application what looks to be, as far as the app and the OS is concerned, a terabyte of storage. But what the storage system actually does is only assign a very small amount of storage, just enough to hold whatever that server is going to use on day one. Then, as new data is added to that server, as it continues to get used and, and so forth, uh, dynamically on the fly, the storage system down here starts adding more storage to the, uh, to the application. That's called thin provisioning. The advantage of doing that is it allows you to assign a very small uh, set of disk initially and then let the storage system automatically grow how much space you're going to use in the background. Where that really becomes an advantage is if we had a bunch of servers, as we normally would in a SAN, and all of these guys wanted, let's say, for example, two terabytes. If I didn't have thin provisioning, day one, I'd have to allocate eight terabytes of storage in this environment. I only have 10 means I probably wouldn't buy a 10 terabyte storage system. I might buy a 20 terabyte storage system, which of course is going to be much more expensive. Again, in the real world, if we bring all these applications online, let's say they all use 100 gigabytes of storage initially. Well, what really happens here is only 400 gigs of storage is really needed day one. So we can get away with buying a much smaller system, maybe not even 10 terabytes, maybe five terabytes or something of that nature. So it allows us to buy the storage resources as we need them, as opposed to buying it all in advance. And what's really important about that is storage is not like wine. It does not get more expensive with age. Disk capacity gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And so you want to use it almost as a just-in-time inventory item. And thin provisioning is a key uh, component in allowing you to do that. OK, so the next storage efficiency feature to talk about is cloning. Cloning is, you can think of that as writable snapshots. And basically what that means is, let's say, going back to our diagram of the four applications we're rolling out, let's say they're all based on Windows. Okay? And let's say they're all running Microsoft SQL, just as an example. 
Well, that means there's a lot of similarity between these different servers. They all have probably the same version of Windows. They probably have all the same version of the SQL application itself. And where the differences really come in is the data that's going to be stored in each uh, database. Well, what cloning would allow you to do is build one master server, store it down here, and then take a snapshot of that and assign each one of those snapshots to the different servers. The advantage of doing that is we eliminate all the redundancy between these different um, applications so that we don't have to duplicate the space required there. Now, across four servers, that's not that big of a deal, but in a VMware environment where we're having heavy server virtualization, so instead of four servers, we might have 40 servers across four physical hosts, now that savings becomes substantial. So cloning uh, is, is another valuable asset in the kind of the war against uh, overusing storage. Finally is space optimization. Space optimization generally breaks down in two categories. We have deduplication, and compression. Uh, both techniques are, can be used commonly. Uh, we'll focus on deduplication for the purpose of this video. But what deduplication does is takes another step further and says, okay, as I've, after I've made these snapshots and these clones, similarities will still creep in between the data. Uh, there could be similar files, there could be similar records within the database, things like that. And so it eliminates even further all of those redundancies as well. Now, where deduplication becomes even more valuable is, of course, as you deploy a server environment, it isn't all going to be Windows and it is all going to be uh, SQL based. So you're going to have file servers, you're going to have web servers, you're going to have uh, exchange servers or email servers. So each one of those obviously now is going to be a totally different set of data that cloning wouldn't pick up, for example. Deduplication will work across the different platforms and so that if you have a PowerPoint file stored on a file server and then that same PowerPoint file is emailed to your colleague, uh, it'll pick up the redundancy and only store one instance of that. So the value is that deduplication works across multiple servers and hosts and disk volumes instead of just isolated on one. So the, the net gain can be significantly higher. Compression really works within the single uh, unit and it only uh, basically acts on a single file at a time. So it, it's, it's again still valuable but it operates on a single file where deduplication identifies redundancies across uh, multiple files across multiple servers. As a result Deduplication can provide a very effective space optimization solution for getting the most out of your existing storage because it works across multiple applications, multiple files. It'll find redundancies within files, assuming the right technology. So again, using that PowerPoint example, let's say uh, everybody uses the same corporate template with the same image in it that image can be identified across the hundreds of PowerPoint presentations and only stored one time on disk, therefore giving you much, much better uh, capacity utilization. So once we get through all of these processes, now let's kind of talk about which one is the best way to go. From our standpoint, it, the best thing to do is use everything you can. Storage is growing. Uh, certainly you don't need to, another survey to tell you that, but clearly we're having a, a growth in storage. So using all of them is good. We think that deduplication is one of the better ones to start with because it works across a wide range of solutions, probably requires the least amount of change, uh, and allows you to really gain benefit right away. If you can use deduplication in combination with cloning and thin provisioning, all the better because then basically what happens is you only allocate the capacity that's needed, then you uh, eliminate redundancy initially by 
using a kind of a golden master copy, and then you remove uh, duplicates that work their way back in to the storage environment by using deduplication. The net effect should be, depending on the environment, somewhere between a 5 to uh, 7x elimination of redundant data. Again, it'll vary. Uh, VMware environments will be to the higher part of that, maybe 7x. Other environments will be a little lower than that. So that kind of gives you a good description on what is the best way to optimize storage. And that concludes part one of our chalk talk on primary storage optimization. Again, I'd like to thank Permabit for being the sponsor of this chalk talk. Please stay tuned for our next video on this uh, subject where we talk about optimizing capacity in the solid state storage environment. <laughs>